Young Man's Fancy is our first Richard Matheson written show of the year. It was also his last to air in season three. The same goes for prolific director John Brom. This was the one and only time these two legendary forces worked on the same episode in this series. So was the story my fa- my f- uh, my cup of tea? Newlyweds Alex and Virginia Walker just tied the knot and are about to go on their honeymoon. First, they stop at Alex's childhood home to pack up. They're planning on selling the house since the groom's overbearing mother, Henrietta, passed away a little while back. Everything inside has eerily been kept exactly the same, as if frozen in time. Alex waxes nostalgic about his mom, a woman Virginia despised for keeping Alex dependent on her for years. The longer they're in the house, the more Alex becomes attached. When the real estate agent, Mr. Wilkinson, stops by to get Alex's final signature to put the house up for sale, he changes his mind to his wife's dismay. Walker goes on about his father abandoning him when he was two months old and how his mother lost her health caring for him over the next few decades. The argument escalates until Virginia notices a few strange things about the interior of the house. This is not bad. It's not. There are a few decently suspenseful moments and the idea is a good one. Phyllis Thaxter's excellent performance as Virginia is by far and away the best thing about the episode. He's mine now. You'll never get your claws on him again. I wouldn't expect anything less from Ma Kent. Alex Nichol as her husband is fine, but didn't have that desperation a man who's kind of losing it would exude. The real estate agent, Mr. Wilkinson, played by Wallace Rooney, is the only returning actor in this small cast. He was in season two's The Rip Van Winkle Caper and would show up again in season four's In His Image. They gave him a catchphrase in this one. Fine and dandy. Fine and dandy. Fine and dandy. Have a nice honeymoon. Rod Serling had a significantly long narration at the top of the show that made things feel a little different. It almost reminded me of It's a Good Life with how he explained the entire setup before the characters even appeared. There are things to like here, and I came away more positive than negative on Young Man's Fancy. It's just that with a Richard Matheson script that was directed by John Brom, I was hoping for more. It's not Mr. Dingle the Strong, but it's probably second from the bottom for Brom. Across the installments we've covered so far these first three seasons, this is likely Matheson's worst, but even bad for him is still pretty decent. He later said in an interview that he hated the ending, and some of the performances in the finale blew the whole show. Speaking of which... The new Mrs. Walker sees that the home has fully reverted to what it looked like when Alex's mother was alive. This includes the broken grandfather clock working, Henrietta's favorite magazine sitting on her chair, and fresh fudge on the counter. Virginia rushes to the stairs to see Henrietta waiting for her at the top of them. She scowls down as Virginia looks up in disbelief. Gathering her strength, Virginia shouts about how horrible Henrietta was for her son, and that, as his wife, her love will make him strong but the appearance of Alex's mother has little to do with Henrietta herself. You will not have him back! This is not my doing. Come back to me, mother. I want you to. Alex, not you. Go away, lady. We don't need you anymore. Heartbroken, Virginia runs out of the house a house that now has the last piece to its living exhibit of yesteryear. So on paper, this totally works, which is why I can partially see Matheson being angry about how it was portrayed. We have this big buildup of the mom in these sneering pictures, and she looks pretty intimidating. But then she shows up in the flesh and doesn't even look mad. She just seems disappointed. That could have been a good angle if it was played up more, like she's let down that her son still needs her even after death and she can't rest in peace, his wife wasn't enough for him, and so on, but this came off like it was supposed to be this big, terrifying finale, and while Thaxter is acting her behind off in this scene, the emotion only goes one way. Your hatred isn't strong enough now. It's not your little boy anymore. Henrietta should have been presented as overly possessive of her son and at least yelled at Virginia for not being what he needed. Only she knows what her little boy needs. You know, make it off-putting and creepy and have this lady come across as some sort of threat. Matheson also didn't like the kid actor they got for Alex, but 
I thought he was fine. To make that turn more twisted, I think they just needed to shoot it a little differently. Some dramatic lighting or some more intentional camera movements probably would have gone a long way. Let's be honest, the twist itself wasn't surprising. I think most people could see where this was going. Similar concepts were already done at this point as well. Long Distance Call had a more unnerving mother figure coming back from the great beyond, and Kick the Can had a more positive take on adults changing back into kids. But as I've said, we want execution over the expected. I'm sure Matheson's original script read better than how this turned out. Again, this isn't awful. I just wouldn't go out of my way to watch or re-watch it unless you want to see Thaxter's emotional performance and a few creepy sequences. Like Alex and his mom, maybe this one should stay frozen in time. In the Twilight Zone. Fine and dandy. 